Hi everyone. Uh, so I'm in Thessaloniki. There's the White Tower, the famous White Tower of Thessaloniki. And what I'm looking at right now is just the bay. It's very pretty. And uh, yeah, I'll just be talking about my day. Oh, before I start, I'll talk about... I should have added this story to yesterday, or I guess to yesterday's day, uh, to the video this morning, and I completely forgot. Is this... Yeah, it's a story that really got to me. It's uh, so I was going up the hill, starting the hill, so I was going ra really slowly just because it's a hill and I'm not like powering through it. Um, so I was going rather slowly and this one big dog comes and starts barking at me. And so it's just, but by this time I kind of know they're not going to do anything, but it's just still annoying and I'm still scary. So I kind of like kept an eye on him, but just kept going and kept going. But then there's a second one that joins him, and then a third one, and fourth. At the end, there were five dogs after me, and it was just, it was just too much. Uh, so they they let it go after like a minute. But yeah, it was still really annoying just to have those dogs barking at you when you're like trying to do some bit of effort. So yeah, uh, so that was for yesterday. Today, <coughs> so like I said in the video this morning. It's, uh, I did the lower part of town in the morning. Really wasn't much though, like, uh, there was nothing really spectacular that was like, oh my gosh, like, this is beautiful. It was okay, a lot of ruins. And then, um, I'll, I'll, I'll hear about it from the tour guide later on. But yeah, there was a lot of Roman things and Greek things, but not a lot of Ottoman things. Which is rather strange, uh, but the tour guide told us really, once the, the Ottomans were out, they destroyed everything. Uh, so some things were kept, but like they're like, no, we, it's, it's ridiculous that we destroyed our own history because it's still our history. Uh, but yeah. So yeah, uh, a lot of great things, a lot of churches that were mosques that were back to churches, um, a lot of that kind of stuff. Uh, Otherwise, yeah, that's pretty much it for the tour I did on my own. Um, just ate at a bakery uh, for lunch. And... Yeah, and then to... Uh, this afternoon, so I went back to the hostel just to check things on uh, online. And then I did the tour. Really good tour. Uh, so five things from the tour. The first thing... They're rather loud. <laughs> or maybe I'm just getting old. Um, oh, I didn't write that, these down. Uh, but okay, well, first of all, Thessaloniki, Thessaloniki is. Uh, oh, I might move. They're annoying. Uh, so yeah, I didn't realize that Thessaloniki was the second biggest city in Greece. I just thought it was just there. Uh, so yeah, second largest city in Greece. Then. Uh, so we walked around, oh right, and then the whole lower town, upper town, it's really strange. So the, the lower town, I would imagine would be the, the newer part because you see all the like new buildings, this is it. Uh, but he says, well, you know, it's the old town, but that was ravaged by a fire. And so after the fire, everything switched, that, the l lower town, which was the old town, became the new town because we rebuilt everything in a modern way. But then the new town, that was the upper town, is now the old town. Uh, and the tour was only about the old town, so we just walked about uh, the old town with small streets, all curvy, all crazy. Um, so yeah, that was the first one. Tsuniniki is the second biggest city, uh, the uh, lower and upper town. Then, um, oh, I forgot, I'm forgetting it. Oh, right, there was a mosaic. There was a really, really pretty mosaic uh, that was in a church. And uh, the church had been used as a mosque when the Ottomans were about. And so they had covered it, like plastered over it, uh, but hadn't destroyed it. Usually they would destroy it, but they decided to keep it and just plastered over it. And by plastering it, actually they conserved it because when... Uh, the Greeks had <coughs> went back to having it they're like doing some digs around and the whole thing just fell out and yeah this beautiful mosaic was re revealed 
So, and yes, yeah, so we spend a lot of time talking about the mosaic. Um, then there is... <coughs> oh, right, so uh, the Ottomans. Oh, right, and um, sorry, I'm just, I'm just getting confused. Uh, I did not know that Thessaloniki was a big Jewish city. And the reason behind it is that the Ottomans had power here during the Great Inquisition of Spain. And when Sp Spain expelled all the Muslims and all the Jews, Ottomans, the Ottomans were quite happy to receive everyone. They're like, no, bring them in. Like, we, we'd love to have them. Like, they, so apparently in, they came in their thousands, uh, and especially to Thessaloniki. Uh, so, yeah, Thessaloniki became, I, th I think he said, the first or second biggest Jewish city in Europe. Like, it was, it was pretty massive, and the Ottomans, like, the Ottoman ruler was just like, I don't get, these rulers who are trying to get rid of, like, these, like, skilled workers and laborers, like, yeah, bring them in. Um, so yeah, Thessaloniki was a big sort of Jewish hub until World War II, where, yeah, it was brutal, apparently. Um, yeah, they just, I think he said around 90%, or maybe a bit more. Of, uh, of Jewish people were were killed or I guess never came back um, and then so that was the fourth fact and then the fifth fact is which also I didn't know about history so when the Greeks took back uh, this place uh, at the end of World War one or I guess a little bit after World War one uh, they suddenly came in with agreements with the Ottomans or with the Turks I guess at that time and it was just an exchange of population they're like we want all the Greeks back in Greece and we will give you all the Turks or all the all the Muslims and it was not it was not um, an option like if you were Muslim living here you had to leave and um, so yeah so he the tour guide was like he, he, uh, he obviously was against it he obviously thought it was a stupid idea um, but yeah, he's like we we lost a big part of our population because they were they were Muslim and they this is their home like this I guess was their home like they they deserve to live here and we were not super welcoming to uh, like not him but like as as a population they were not super welcoming to the Greeks coming from Turkey because he's like like a lot there was a lot of racism of like calling them Turks because. I mean, there's, sure, I guess ethnically they were Greek, but like, in terms of their culture, they, they were a mix. Um, but he's like, no, it made us, like, it, they brought their culture with them, their cooking, their desserts, their music, so it was sort of an exchange of cultures, but I don't know, he seemed to be very against it, he seemed to think that it would have been better just to, to leave things alone and have Greeks living in Turkey. and. Turks living in Greece um, but yeah so those are my fa five facts uh, something new that I've never seen a tour guide do before uh, he had his I can't remember the name of his instrument but it looked a bit like a balaika or balalaika um, so yeah six string instrument but the strings are paired and so it's like three groups of three couples three couple of strings is that right yeah um, and yeah, like we were at a in a square where we talked about a very very famous like groundbreaking Greek musician, and he's like, well, I'm gonna sing you a song from him. So he took out his instrument and played us one of his songs, and he's like, like, and he apparently the artist Sintige or something like that, Sintiges. Uh, he he was a really big influence into like Greek music, and so he's like, I'm gonna now sing you a modern Greek song that's like was influenced by him um, but yeah that was really quite nice and so yeah in our group there were we were five uh, well we started with five uh, there was so me then there was a man from Egypt a man from New York City a lady from Brazil and a lady from Lithuania so that was quite a mix um, yeah, and so I spoke a little bit to the the man from Egypt, and yeah, it was, I told him that you know I lived there for a bit, and so it was kind of fun. And then the guy from New York, he was doing a big, big trip 
he had started like a year and a half ago and he started in Guatemala and then just ended up doing all South America and he's like then I went to Ireland and then I did a bit of Ireland uh, of Europe and here I am so that seemed quite interesting um, and yeah so when we were doing the mosaic we were in a church and these two ladies came in and they obviously were like kind of listening in to, to our, our tour and at the end of it, the tour guy was like, you know, you, you can join, like it's a free tour, just tip at the end. And they're like, okay, so then we had two Greek ladies with us as well. Um, and yeah, it was also kind of uh, cute during the song part. So when we were listening, we were sitting down at, the, at this park, part, I guess a square, it wasn't really green, but it was a square. And he's like, there's a cat that's gonna come, really friendly, don't mind him, he always comes. And yeah, sure enough, there was, as he was singing, this cat comes along and just like rubs his head against everyone and just really wants to be pet. Um, but yeah, uh, then, so at the end of the tour, he recommended, so he he seemed really interested in, in, in us, which again, like some tour guides, you don't really care and they'll, they, they're, you're just there to to listen to them and then to give them money but he seemed genuinely interested like I told him I was French he was like oh did you hear about the protests happening in France what is that about like and then uh, every time he could say something about uh, he didn't say much about the US but Egypt he like really try to connect with Egypt he's like yeah we have a legend about like Egyptian pharaohs and then uh, yeah with uh, well he couldn't really connect with Brazil or Lithuania or he, he did mention Lithuania uh, once or twice just because their language is really old so no he was a really good tour guide and yeah he recommended somewhere to eat tonight so that's where I'm gonna go after this video and he also uh, what else did he do? oh right uh, I told him that I was biking and then he's like oh where are you off to next and I was like east <laughs> he's like oh okay so at the end of the tour he wrote down two places he's like these are really nice places they're not really known but they're really nice I think you'll enjoy them um, yeah, like see, uh, you know, look them up, see if you're interested. So I'm gonna do that tonight, and then see, and then see. But that's about it. Um, nothing else much. Nothing much else. Um, yeah. Anyways, that's it for me. So tomorrow I'm heading east, but uh, my next big point is 250 kilometers away. Um, and there's nothing really in the middle that I can see right now where to sleep. Uh, so I'm not sure where I'm going to end up tomorrow evening. Uh, I might have just to, just to tent it uh, somewhere. I'll see how it goes. Anyways, bye.